Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about another design pattern and this time I am going to talk about chain of responsibility design pattern. Chain of responsibility design pattern is also one of the design pattern from the gang of four design pattern. Chain of responsibility design pattern is a behavioral design pattern and the main intent of this pattern is to avoid coupling between the sender of a request from its receiver by giving more than one object a chance to handle the request. So what exactly does this mean? What it means is just like all other behavioral design pattern, the main intent of behavioral design pattern is to focus on object composition rather than inheritance. And that is something we have seen with state pattern as well as observer pattern. Chain of responsibility design pattern follows the same behavior. The way it works for chain of responsibility pattern is instead of one class handling the request, we divide the request into multiple handler and based on the situation, the handler decide whether to propagate the request to the next level or not. This is a classic design pattern which can be used for any sort of hierarchical responsibility. And a very obvious example for that is any sort of approval. So in today's video, in my example for chain of responsibility design pattern, I am going to consider an expense report approval scenario. So basically we will have three levels of approval. And when an expense report is created, it'll go through three level of approval and each approval level you can consider as a handler and then the handler each handler will propagate to the next handler to handle the request that way we create a chain of responsibility as the name suggests so for that first i'm going to create a class for manager who is the first level of handler or first one responsible for approval in the chain of responsibility so i'm going to create a new class and I call it as senior manager and the senior manager is going to implement an interface. So let me declare the interface here as well. And we're going to name the interface as iManager. And the I manager, if you think about it, because this is a chain, and what is the main responsibility? The main responsibility is to approve an expense report. So first, let's create the class for expense. And we can create internal record expense, expense report. And the report is going to have a name. It will have other things also, but for simplicity, I'm just keeping name. And the next thing is an amount. Amount ideally should be a double, but for this example, I'm just keeping it as an integer. Okay, so the first thing the manager has to do is approve. So you can have approve request, and it will take expense report as the parameter. And also for a manager, the manager needs to know who is the supervisor or the next level in the chain of responsibility, who will the approval fall back to if this manager is not able to approve. So for that, we can create a method called void set supervisor. And it's going to take I manager because everyone is going to be a manager. So first one is senior manager. And let's implement I manager. And here we can create private I manager manager. And in this place we can say manager is equal to this dot manager is equal to manager. And in this case, what we are going to do is we're going to have a simple logic. We're going to say if expense report dot amount is less than 500, then the manager can approve. And for the approval, we're just going to have a console dot write line and we can say approved by manager. 
else what we are going to do is if it is more than 500 then we are going to say else manager dot approve request because then the senior manager is going to give it to the next level for approval and then after senior manager we're going to have another class and I'm going to just create all the classes here just for simplicity but you can keep the classes into their own different file you can create another class called vice president it's also going to implement I manager and let's implement I manager and here similar to the senior manager the vice president also is going to have the private manager and here we can say this dot manager is equal to manager and here for the vice president we are going to the amount that vice president can approve is up till 1000 so you can say if expense report dot amount is less than 1000 then again let's do a console dot right line and here we can say approved by VP else if that's not the case then manager dot approve request then it is just sending it to the next level and then finally we'll have the third class which is going to be internal class co and let's say that's the last level and here similarly we're going to have a private manager let's say this dot manager is equal to manager and here we can say CO can approve up till five thousand dollar. So if expense report dot amount is less than five thousand dollar, then CO is just going to go ahead and approve it. Otherwise, in this case, CO is just going to say not approved. So that's how we created three different hierarchy, but without creating uh, inheritance. So senior manager, vice president, as well as CEO, all are implementing iManager, but they have their own supervisor. And based on a situation, the responsibility will go to the next one in the chain. And that's a classic implementation of chain of responsibility. And then what we can do is we can go here we can say var manager is equal to new senior manager let's add the namespace and then we can say var dp equal to new vice president and finally var co equal to new c co and then we are going to set the supervisor so for manager, the supervisor is going to be VP. For VP, supervisor is going to be CO. And now let's create a, let's create an expense. Expense report. And let's say we're buying a monitor. It's going to cost $100. And then we can just have console.write line of expense so that we print out what it is. And then let's do manager dot approve request expense. And then similarly, we are going to have two more expenses. The next one, let's say it's going to be a desk because we all are working remote these days. It's going to cost $900. And the third one is going to be, let's say, a travel expense. 
and it's going to cost $5,500 and then we're just going to see in the chain which handler handles the response and I can just add a delineator here just for better readability in the console. Okay, now let's run this application. And in the first case, we should see that the senior manager itself is able to approve. In the second case, it is going to go to the VP and VP is going to approve. In the third case, it's going to go to the CEO, but CEO is going to decline because it is even beyond the amount the CEO can approve. So let's run this. And once we run, we can see that the first one is approved by manager, second one is approved by VP, and the third one is not approved as expected. So this is in essence, very simple implementation of chain of responsibility design pattern. Now one thing about chain of responsibility design pattern, as you can see, this is something which complements the solid design principles. Because as you can see, we are still using a single responsibility principle where we are deciding which manager can approve what amount, but then we are adding the supervisor concept using which we are adding the next handler in the pipeline for the request to go. And this is how we can create a chain of responsibility principle. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and you think you are getting well out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video.